Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Badger's Exam Prep. I hope all of you are doing fairly well. Through the course of this lecture, we will be looking at a very important question that is commonly asked by everybody, that if you are preparing for NET-based, uh, NET, uh, for instance, if you're preparing for NET JRF in English, are there any other exams also that you can actually sit for? <coughs> Please excuse me. <coughs> So sorry, are there any other exams that you can actually sit for? Well, yes, of course, there are multiple exams, such as the GATE exam, there are multiple PGT-based exams where a BL is really not necessary. There are multiple set exams that we're having. There are a bunch of PhD entrances also that we have. So today we're going to be discussing about the GATE examination so that any aspirant who wants to start preparing for the next GATE exam, you can actually just make sure that you are uh, fully prepared, you're up to speed um, with the preparation. Hi, Divyani. Hi, Rupesh. Hi, Sneha. I hope all of you are doing really well. Thanks so much for joining on time. I really appreciate that. So without further ado, let me just walk you through. This is going to be like a really brief presentation. I will help you out with what are the steps that you can take vis-a-vis -vis your preparation. What are certain things that you can be aware of? Also, uh, certain units that you have to focus on and what should be your preparation strategy? Let me tell you, if you are preparing exhaustively for NetJRF, the preparation over here becomes a lot more structured already. And you don't have to really worry uh, a lot about it. Having said that, of course, uh, we will still see that, you know, syllabus focused understanding should be there. Also, a lot of you keep on writing that you want to take English literature as an optional subject for various uh, state PCS exams. Let me just see if you're able to hear me. Yeah, 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 you are able to hear me. Uh, for various state PCS exams, how can you go about that? So uh, let me just tell you that whenever we are sitting for any state uh, services exams and you take English literature as an optional, it's a myth that uh, that if you take English literature as an optional, you'll never be able to clear the exam. That's a huge myth. Uh, it's just that a lot of us don't take it as an optional. Therefore, a lot of us don't actually qualify the exam. Uh, but if we all start taking it up, obviously, we'll see a better rate uh, of conversion altogether. Let me share my screen. Let me leverage uh, you know, a, a particular slide also. And today, specifically, because we are focused Focusing more on the gate exam. So let's quickly discuss a little bit about the gate exam, right? So what is this gate exam that we're having? This is basically an entrance test, just like you have your uh, NEAT exam that people give if they want to get into medical professions at the undergrad uh, undergrad level, uh, just like they're having a GEE uh, if they want to get into IITs at the UG level. Similarly, at the postgrad level, we are having the GATE examination. And the syllabus for the GATE examination for English is actually, if you're preparing properly for your uh, NET exam, automatically you're going to be prepared for this exam as well. Uh, now, what kind of questions come in? What is the structure? Um, what is the syllabus like? How should your preparation strategy start if you're watching this video right now, whether you're watching it live or you're watching it at a later stage? What should your preparation strategy be like? That will be the major agenda that we'll be talking about, okay? So without further ado, let's just very quickly dive in. So uh, if you look at it, so GATE, uh, the section C part is actually dealing with English literature. Uh, but having said that, let me tell you that you don't really have to worry about the general aptitude paper because even when when you're looking at the preparation that you're doing for your paper one net or your set examination uh, you're pretty much getting prepared but still of course you can take a look at the the first two sections which are coming in the c section of the paper that you're having is actually going to be related to english and that to english literature what are the things that you have to basically follow so one thing which is really nice is that um the gate makes it really simple. Uh, the, the syllabus is very well structured. They've already undergone two important additions already. So people are aware about the kind of structure that they can expect uh, over here for this particular exam, right? So the structure is not a big issue at all. The structure is not a major problem at all. So that shouldn't be a major issue uh, for anybody. But let me just still walk you through. Now, A, just like in your net exam, you have your drama paper, you have your poetry, you have your non-fictional prose, you have your fictional 
motivational short stories. Similarly, over here also, you are having a genre stratified study. And uh, what is uh, essentially seen a lot of time is that genres are often taken into considerations. There is this entire preparation, which is very uh, genre heavy. So this keeps on happening. This keeps on taking place. So here you have poetry, you have novel, you're having short story, you have drama, uh, which comes in. And of course, there's a lot of focus of literature post the romantic era, uh, particularly the romantic era. So you, you can start studying from the Augustan age in, in greater detail because they do give you a lot of questions uh, coming from uh, that particular part. You can actually uh, give more, just give me one second. Uh, you can actually focus more on these areas, uh, such as the 19th century, the 20th century. Because a lot of these questions are predominantly asked, a lot of these questions actually come in. Uh, so, so you you should be prepared about the fact that you know uh, that there are a couple of genres which are asked over here, and that too specifically if you start focusing from romanticism onwards, that will be helpful. Uh, so, for instance, if you're following books like David Dietrich, so you can actually uh, go over David Dietrich from the Augustan age onwards because that is where a major chunk of the questions would be coming in. Uh, so, and we have mentioned it. That there is a lot of emphasis on Victorian and the modern age. Uh, but you know, you will not be able to understand Victorian age properly if you don't understand the Romantic era properly. Uh, so each and every era is linked and a basic understanding of the history would definitely help you out entirely. Uh, so that is one particular thing that I, I highly recommend that the same structured approach that you're following uh, for your uh, net paper one in the four units, you actually try to uh, get that more holistically there, get your notes prepared for Victorian modern age, uh, for modern age, because these notes will be very helpful, make very crisp, concise notes, try to get a big register, try to make sure that, you know, from romanticism all the way to postmodern British writers, you're covering under one shelf itself, because these questions are directly asked. So it's always going to be very helpful if you keep it in a structured manner altogether. Uh, besides that, also remember that uh, it's not just focusing on British literature. There is a lot of uh, stress which is given on comparative literature. There's a lot of stress on English writings uh, in India. There is a lot of stress which is given to the, uh, the, the South Asian writers that you're having. So a lot of stress on the new areas, basically. So if you look at the new subjects that have been introduced in the recent decade, like comparative literature, English studies in India and universities, or, you know, your African literature, for instance, or American literature, for instance. Uh, so these are the kind of literatures that you have to focus on, the Japanese writings, the Chinese writings, which is coming in English. Uh, what is the context setting that we are having? Uh, so these are things that you should know. What are the new trends that are emerging vis-a-vis -vis the writers that are there. So there is a lot of focus and, and uh, you can actually club it under your comparative literature category. So that really helps you build that base altogether. Uh, so this is another thing that you know you should structure uh, in a very structured method methodological way or uh, have another register altogether considering now most of you are preparing for the next attempt of gate and keep these notes concise because they can be leveraged then for your other exams also and trust me when you study comparative literature when you study um or you know your uh, south asian writers your post-colonial writers your african literature you are also trying to get your thesis ideas you start getting a lot of ideas as to what your research area should be uh, which category do you want to research in which category limited number of material is available and you want to create a mark in that particular uh, regard so that was that is also very very helpful and you can always go um, in this particular direction as well Please remember, uh, no literary exam in today's day and age can actually be complete via an exhaustive study of literary criticism, theory, as well as cultural studies. So you can make a separate compartment altogether. If you're creating e-notes, you can make a separate drive where you're collecting all the database. Or if you're making a notebook, make a separate notebook altogether for literary criticism, theory, and cultural studies. And let me tell you, um, you know what happens is that, of course, you can study these topics. You can always study these topics in one go, uh, but literary criticism theory as well as cultural studies, if you take one writer per day or like, you know, theory per day, uh, that really helps you understand things better. So it's always good to have a dedicated, uh, you know, register or a dedicated notebook or a dedicated drive uh, where you are trying to put across all those things. I would recommend to, uh, take five terms on a regular basis, take five questions on literary criticism, theory and cultural studies, uh, new studies which are coming in uh, with, with regards to aesthetics. Also in the second part, uh, in the second part here, 
cover a lot of dalit aesthetics also because you do get questions coming from there uh, cover a lot of uh, your indian writers from partition time to the current time cover a lot of your indian drama as well cover your african writings in american literature so make a list of these are the writers that i have to specifically undergo uh, these are the podcasts or the lectures that i will try to listen to if you want any help for instance if you're not finding any material uh, see or if you're not finding structured material on poetry or anything uh, even though I, i would like to tell you that via youtube also which is brainstorming so we'll be uh, getting a lot of asset classes um, so on youtube what we'll be doing now is we'll be having asset classes like a lot of you are like okay uh, where can i study um, history of english literature so we'll just like you know have a dedicated just like you have these podcast series um that are coming at harvard for instance or at a yale or a wharton so similarly you you can just have you know these kind of drive uh, asset videos uh, we'll try to of course it will be like a patient and that we have to have a lot of patience with all of us because you know we'll take it series by series we'll exhaustively try to cover it so then you can pick and choose okay this is a uh, history of english literature podcast or you know these 13 to 14 lectures on youtube really will help me with the context setting or understanding what do i have to study or these 15 odd videos on youtube will really help me with understanding african writings or african writers or which all african writers we have to focus on so we'll be running these series in the upcoming days for all of you uh, which will really help you but understanding that you know uh, that this is how the the structure would largely be, uh, would would go about will really uh, give you a lot of idea and insights into how you can prepare largely for your gate exam so uh, the first component british writings genre specific specific studies 19th and 20th century the second part your comparative literature upcoming literature the afro american writers that you're having the post colonial literature which is coming in third of course literary criticism these are the pillars these are the pillars on which you will be creating your kingdom or your house where you qualify gate and you can get into you know research um, at iits so this is your entry point right this is your entry point and it's a very good uh, this is going to be a very good certification so to say to have on your resume that you qualified gate exam right so always remember all these aspects uh, history of english literature and english literary studies a lot of people get confused there are uh, books wherein you have history of english literature you also have history of literary studies history of language which comes across now history this this actually is like you know uh, just like in in I, I'll, i'll be telling you about one or two other exams just like in some exams what do they do is that they uh, they kind of tell you that uh, you will be having common errors now common errors equals to the entire english grammar coming in similarly history of english literature that means the entire history uh, where you are having literary output coming in that will be asked so this is like literally everything that you have to cover uh, but uh, you, so so on on the first note in the first particular topic they have of course clarified uh, that that you know you just need to focus on say for instance um you only need to focus on the 19th and 20th century but here they make it very clear that you know basic questions from history can be very uh, helpful here you can take the support of a couple of material which is available streamline your content you can probably pick up any book that you want to uh, right uh okay uh, so so coming on to what are the future see first of all uh, sona the eligibility criteria is because it's it's for your post grad so graduation is like a really important degree that you need to have that's the eligibility criteria let's keep it as simple as that the second point is what are the future opportunities so a it it qualifies you it's giving you a foot in the door for research at iits that's the that's another point also a lot of uh, you know a lot of job positions get opened for you internally in and during colleges if you have cleared the gate exam so there are there are teaching based jobs in universities and colleges and there are non teaching based jobs which are able to prepare better via giving the gate exam so just remember that okay just keep that in mind uh, so that's it's a real simple thing it's a very very simple thing there's no nothing complicated and if you're not able to understand this then i highly recommend that you shouldn't write and you shouldn't sit for this exam because you will uh, not be able to clear it uh, so so it's like a real simple thing um, that there are five important sections that you have to focus on if you want to prepare for gate english that's the simple thing that you're having uh, also research aptitude literary theories rhetoric and prosody literary uh, terms uh, so so this again is like a real open topic where they are telling you uh, that you will get questions coming from all across the devices the genres the techniques the methodologies everything would be coming in so you should be really active you should uh, know how you want to deal with it 
because that becomes important. So these are the five important topics that would be asked over here in your exams. Uh, and you should be ideally prepared for all of these topics. Okay. Now, another question that comes in is that uh, fine, uh, like, you know, I'm, I'm preparing for, uh, like, you know, gate examination, uh, or I'm preparing for a net examination, which are the other exams that by default, am I getting prepared for? So there are a plethora of other exams that you're getting prepared for, for instance, a lot of exams, which are having literature uh, based components, Component, you're actually getting an access to that. This includes your PGT postgraduate teaching exams. Um, this includes a lot of your other literature based exams. Uh, uh, for instance, if you want to go uh, say abroad, right, and you want to uh, say go to Birmingham University to do an online PhD program. So for that, you will have to actually submit, uh, you know, your test scores. Uh, there also literary knowledge will be very helpful. Then a lot of your interviews also, if you're getting selected, if you're going for research or college level teaching and literature, then of course your knowledge that you're studying uh, and you're amassing during your net preparation will be very helpful uh, so overall of course there is a lot of scope uh, when you're preparing for your net exam the same syllabuses history of english language literature american literature post-colonial literature cultural studies, literary criticism, literary theory, research aptitude, uh, English in India, all of these topics are topics that, that will be very helpful in multiple other exams as well. Also, there's a caveat uh, very quickly, uh, very, very quickly, there is a caveat that you're having. And what is the caveat that Gate has said? So Gate has uh, Gate has said this really beautiful things that, you know, the five topics that are there, uh, it is not that, you know, there will be um, a particular uh, component which will get more questions, they're going to be tested equally okay so predominantly this is how your your paper actually looks like your multi-genre english literary studies your genre specific studies there's an emphasis on 19th and 20th century indian literature literary criticism and theory history of english language and literature research approaches literary terms this is how your syllabus actually looks like so this sheet will help you uh, understand that you know what is going to be asked in your exams what you have to be prepared uh, uh, about so this this just gives you a kind of a sneak peek uh, into that so you can always keep that in mind okay uh, also uh, how are you supposed to be preparing genre based studies genre based studies can be prepared you can study your, uh, uh, you know, everything that comes under British drama, American drama, post-colonial drama, this is the approach that you can actually put. This is like a kind of a list uh, of writers that you can actually cover if you are studying, if you're preparing for your gate examination. Uh, so, um, so, so, you know, you can, you can always just make sure that this is the approach that you're following. Create a list, create a, a sheet, a laundry list, basically, of what are the topics that you're going to, uh, what are the topics that you're going to actually um, be researching on. So just remember that. Also, please remember that each and every topic that you are preparing, try to exhaustively cover all the writers. For instance, if you're doing theater of absurd, cover all the writers that are coming under theater of absurd. If you're probably, uh, you know, looking covering a topic like classical uh, Greek and Roman drama, cover all the topics that will come, all the writers will be coming under that category. So try to make sure that the laundry list after that is prepared, you're trying to cover all the writers, uh, which, which are going to be relevant in that particular area. Poetry again, make a list of what all topics will you be covering, the origin of English poetry, uh, how the English poetry is developing, metaphysical school of poets, Elizabethan poets, Renaissance poetry, neoclassical poetry, um, your Victorian poetry, romantic poetry. So just cover uh, everything in a very structured manner. If it is more structured, the better it becomes and you're able to absorb things better, right? So likewise, um, just, just make sure that you're covering each and every aspect. These are just lists. I will share this if you want on the Telegram platform. Uh, this is just a sort of a laundry list that you can prepare. So predominantly, there are these pillars that you're having the same pillars, but um, gate exam. So uh, a lot of people that I keep on meeting, they're like, you know, the gate exam is like a little, uh, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't say a lower version, but definitely a little easier version. If you're preparing for net constantly, this will definitely give you more insight altogether. So just creating a syllabus uh, structure that, you know, what you want to prepare, how you want to go about it, that would really help altogether, right? Uh, so, so like I said, GATE is an exam which helps you, prepares you uh, for a lot of your, your so-called career, so to say, as a postgraduate aspirant in IITs or engineering colleges, as well as the job opportunities which get opened after you clear the GATE exam. A lot of organizations hire you based on your GATE credentials. So you can 
actually um, you know even show this on your resume it's really good to have it is also your entry point to research that you can actually conduct so that is also very important uh, so just understand that you know if you're preparing for net exam by default you get prepared for a plethora of other exams and gate is one such exam uh, so just uh, try and make sure that you know you're all set you're all looking at a uh, uh, proper preparation strategy and uh, we are always there to support you we will like i said we'll be coming up with asset videos in the coming days uh, which hopefully should be really very helpful for everybody uh, and, and uh, you can just replay all of them i'm here for a minute or two let me see in the chat box uh, uh, Tinku, we will, we will, this is like a very, very basic uh, session today. We just wanted to introduce this idea that, yes, if you're preparing for English-based exam, like NetGRF, automatically you're prepare, getting prepared for, for a plethora of other exams, right? So uh, essentially, we will uh, be conducting more sessions to help you prep better for these exams altogether. We'll be running these series, uh, which will really be very, very helpful, right? So I'll be sharing the schedule with all of you in the upcoming days as well for all those series that we'll be running. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. I really appreciate. Um, and I think that's that's all. Let's let's just wrap it up for today. Uh, and, and just make sure that you completely structure in a very structured manner. You're preparing for all the upcoming exams. You are studying as well and as hard as possible. And I'm sure this will really hold you in great stride. Thank you so much for joining in. I'll see you guys today at 8 p.m. on the application platform. Subsequently, I'll see classroom students at 9 p.m. for our session on, um, on the topic that we're continuing with. Uh, so, so let's just catch up both at 9, 8, 8, 8 p.m. as well as at 9 p.m. All right. Thank you so much for joining in. Take good care of yourselves.